Well, the president and his aides keep saying Americans don't care about the process in passing this legislation. But a new poll by Fox News does show that a majority of Americans are at least seeing through the Democrats' sleight of hand gimmick in pushing a bill through. Are the Democrats playing with fire by doing this? Here to score it for us, Fox News contributor Monica Crowley, radio talk show host Leslie Marshall, and Fox News medical contributor, just kind of sobering us all out with a medical view, Dr. Sonara Coomer. Great to see you. Fantastic to see all of you here. Hi, David. Thanks for being here. Uh, what do you think? The process itself, um, is that almost worse than what's in the bill? You know, last night, one of the things that President Obama said to Brett was, look, I don't think the American people are all that concerned with the process. They just want the final product that's going to improve their lives. The American people are horrified by the content of this bill, which is why the new Fox News Opinion Dynamics poll shows that it's up to 55 percent opposing this uh, comprehensive bill. But they're also really horrified by the way this has been done. And now we're seeing this new reconciliation bill coming out today. People are combing through it. And yet again, David, there's incredible audacity where all of these members of Congress now, or a lot of them anyway, have sneaked in individual special deals that didn't even exist before. Leslie, wouldn't it have been better if the president, right from the beginning, said, look, I believe every American deserves health insurance, and that we're just going just gonna to have a referendum up and down on that issue alone? Well, if you remember, David, that's why the one of the huge reasons the president was elected. But what happened, much like with Clinton, you all of a sudden have the American people change their minds because of people like us and what we're saying out there on radio and television. Well, and they have a so, chance to look it over and decide for themselves. Right, but quite frankly, and no offense to my fellow Americans who I love greatly, but we're kind of a lazy country. We don't like to read 2,000 pages. We don't have cliff lot, notes though. for health care reform. No, I think they're counting on us to read it and tell them what but to think. But the rhetoric of a campaign is one thing. People do get, I agree with you, people right. sometimes get swept up in the rhetoric, right. rhetoric of the campaign. But when they are more sober after the president has been elected and inaugurated, mm -hmm. they do have a chance to think these things over. And I think that's what they've done. And they don't like what they see. Well, I think it depends on what poll you look at. Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal showed 47% approving of and wanting the Obama plan, 9% on undecided on that. And, and certainly we have seen the majority of the American people wanting the public option. So what's happened here is you have Democrats that said, what do we need to do to get the Republicans to the table and to come up with bipartisan support for this plan or to have enough votes to a way it's going to pass. Dr. Coomer, we know that the AMA supports this. The AMA represents what, about 18 percent of doctors in America? 17, 18 percent. What about the other 80 percent of doctors in America? Are they moving away from or closer to this bill? Most of the people that I speak to that are colleagues are very concerned about the health care reform bill because we're not sure how all these patients are going to get taken care of. It needs to be a process where patients are slowly brought into, into the process. We're concerned about the uh, Medicaid ext extension, uh, which is going to be a great concept, actually, but how is that going to get funded and is it really going to bankrupt the system? And then we're concerned about the Medicare system, where doctors are facing cuts in reimbursements already, even without the health care reform. So how much further is it going to go? And Medicare, of course, sets the limit for private insurance companies as well. And, you know, it's not about doctors getting rich. It's about being able to afford their overhead. So you don't want to force doctors out of private practice necessarily and force all of them into a hospitalist type system because then you're going to end up with a clinic well, a type system. A lot of doctors are saying now, we saw that, uh, I, I don't know if it was an official poll, but the survey that came out yesterday saying that up to 45 percent of doctors are, are worried about they might even want to leave medicine if this thing is passed. Right. They are concerned and I think you will see some primary care doctors forced out of practice, uh, if, if not private practice, into a hospital system or forced into a different type of career, maybe teaching or something else, um, because it's going to be about being able to afford their overhead. Remember, doctors are not going to be able to t cover all these patients. They're going to have to get physician extenders right. like PAs and nurse practitioners. And, that and as, bad as, as bad as insurance is, and I'm sure you could tell us some horror stories about insurance mm -hmm. papers dealing with those companies and everything, it's worse dealing with the government, dealing yes. with Medicare and yes. Medicaid, and that's why a lot of health care providers are pulling out of these right. systems. Right. I mean, we all have health insurance company horror yeah. stories, but yeah. the bottom line is would the government or a government takeover handle it any better? And we know that everything that, that the government touches usually turns into a disaster and right. a very cost-ineffective It's the middle, disaster. but it's, you know, I think what we would all agree on, and there are very few things that we all would agree on, but the one thing is the middleman is the problem in health care. Right. It's, it, you want to get as little distance between between the provider, between the doctors and the patients as possible. Because if you're the direct consumer, you're going to be worried about the quality of the care you're getting and the price. And whatever you can do to squeeze that vacuum between the patient provider and, and the actual recipient 
is better. You don't want the insurance in there, but you don't want government in there either, Leslie. Well, you know, David, my husband's an orthopedic surgeon. I don't know your specialty, and I own a medical center, so I certainly know the billing reimbursement side. <laughs> and long before health care reform came along, one of the problems that we've had is there's been a 4% uh, decrease in reimbursements, and not just by the government Medicare, but in the private sector. The, the bigger the paycheck gets for the president and CEO of Blue Cross, United Healthcare, Pacific Care, Aetna, Cigna, et cetera, the lower the reimbursements get and the amount of tests doctors have to run because of the litigiousness of our society and how much malpractice there is and no caps on, on those types of programs. This health this health care reform bill honestly doesn't address that. And that's why, although I support it, I do feel right. it is a beginning that's and a, a great first point. step. But one thing that it does address mm -hmm. is, you know, I think, in the opposite direction, flexible spending. Right. You know, we're given $5,000 tax-free of our salary to spend on health care in a way that we want. It would cut that in half, right. down to $2,500, and it would take away your ability to pay for pills, prescription pills through that's it. That's right, and, and that's what Americans are afraid of, and that's why they're having a hard time buying into the system, because they say, wait a second, we already know what it's like to deal with the government agencies. There's more bureaucracy than we could By the way, as a doctor, with. what's the difference in dealing with an insurance company, the worst insurance store you have, and the worst government? payback story you have. Which is worse? A pile of forms. <laughs> that, Who has that, more forms? That I would agree with. But at least Medicare, forms. honestly, Medicare pays at least our office quicker than the private. So we have to fight more with like... But doctors costs. say they're not paying enough and in fact oh, they're no, going to cut not. back. No, they're, they're not. not. I think I, my husband gets $18.36 for a recheck. Listen, what, what Medicaid pays <laughs> wow. physicians is, is not even worth it. You get it. more yeah. money. Tell me, I, I think we've said this before, you get more money testifying in court in a malpractice yeah. insurance case than you do practicing medicine. Absolutely. And that's with Medicare payments and Medicaid. And let me say, Medicare sets what the private insurance companies are going to be willing to pay for in-network mm -hmm. benefits. Right, Out-of-network benefits are different. But Medicaid, Medicaid, it's not worth the check that they send to the doctor because the amount of money that it costs mm -hmm. for you to fill out the paperwork and cash that check that they send you is more than what they're actually sending you. You know, we got to wrap up. I thought this was going to be more contentious. I think we agree <laughs> on more than we disagree. Ladies, thank you very much. We're going to see more of you later. And